for some of you. Maybe you're even wondering if you're ready for this. It probably seemed like this day would never come. For what comes next? You have no idea what I'm capable of. I don't fight friends because I would win. I didn't know who he was. Never apologize for saving lives. There's only one way this kid goes back out there, and that's on a very short leash. I don't care how old he is, he needs to go down now! Maybe if you train more and complained less, we could get back to saving lives. I'm just happy helping people. You know people try to kill us every single day, right? Make him pay for what he did to your world. Viltrumite against Viltrumite. That has not happened since the Great Purge. Welcome, son of he who slayed my husband. I am a normal human superhero. You should have died at birth. I wish he was dead too, but not for your sake. Kill first, <laughs> ask questions later. You know how I used to say I could see molecules? And me. I just want to talk about where you came from, where your powers came from. I can also change them around. Move electrons from here to there. It's crazy. Maybe I'm a superhero. Your powers, you must stop using. But I can help people. Get out of my way, kid. Why can't you just be normal? I'm a government-designed super weapon. I'm a freaking badass. The name is... Cute. No, the cape is cute. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Happy Comic-Con Week continues. They dropped a brand new Invincible Season 2 trailer. They announced the release date. There's even a special episode that they're dropping tonight. I'll do a separate video for that tomorrow. Be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. First big news is that Season 2 will drop November 3rd, but they're only dropping the first four episodes. They'll air them back to back, week to week. Then they'll take a little break, then they'll air the second four episodes, and season three will premiere around this time next year. Like, they want to cut the gap down so there's not, like, a couple years between season two and season three. They haven't renewed the show for season four yet, but, like, the show would continue to season four or season five. It would also probably be eight episodes per season for those future seasons, too. There's a bunch of big villains that they'll debut. They announced a whole bunch of cast members, even though there isn't a ton of footage of those brand new cast members. Like, there's a ton of really important people you probably spotted. Particularly Peter Cohen is Thaddeus. I'll explain that during the video too. But at the beginning of the season, it's all about dealing with the aftermath of what happened after his father left the planet at the end of season one. Pretty much everybody, including the immortal who starts to fight him, look at him as kind of sus, and he's trying to prove to everyone that he wants to be a superhero and help the planet. The next real big villains, though, that they'll be introducing are Angstrom Levy. He's like the overarching villain of the next big arc. But then you have people like the champion, Anissa, and then eventually we might get a teaser for Thrag at like the end of the season. He doesn't really become a big character till much later in the story. But at the beginning of the trailer, there's a bit of a joke here. You probably spotted it. It's Mark's high school graduation ceremony and his principal is speaking, but his high school is named Reginald Vell Johnson and it's played by real life Reginald Vell Johnson. They even modeled the character after him in real life. You probably remember him from Family Matters or from the Die Hard movies. I just love in this fictional universe of Invincible that Reginald Vell Johnson, instead of being an actor, became a high school principal and got the high school named after him. His speech is generally meant to be a metaphor for everything that Mark is going through at the beginning of the season. Taking the next step, winning everyone over, facing all these challenges, all these other villains that wind up popping up, including the very big villains, which they don't include in the trailer, like most of the big villains they don't put in the trailer. You notice while he's giving the speech, though, they intercut with him going on missions. He's missing from the ceremony because he's on those missions, like all of his friends are sitting here next to him where he would normally be sitting. The big threats from the end of season one that they teased were the Maulers getting rearrested and locked back up. The guy in the cast on his arm was the same guard who they wrecked when they escaped. The Flaxons plotting to attack Earth again. They were the aliens using the time dilation device from another dimension. Omni-Man had traveled to their homeworld and obliterated it in the span of a couple weeks. It was probably one of the best sequences during the series. 
But the idea was because of the time dilation effect, it seemed like he was only gone for a little while, even though he came back with all that extra facial hair. Then there was Doc Seismic from episode 3 who had come back controlling a bunch of the magma golems preparing to attack again. Titan had taken over as the new boss of the city and they got rid of his old boss, Battle Beast attacking again in outer space. Then there was the threat of Cecil inspecting the upgraded Reaniman drones, like they're the Terminators basically, they just keep iterating trying to make them more and more powerful as the last resort against the Viltrumites when they eventually show up again. And they will, but not till like Champion shows up and Nyssa shows up. We see him fighting the Immortal who wants him locked up and is also trying to help train him so it seems like he could go 50-50 either way on him, like we'll lock him up, don't let him out again, or we'll train him to actually be a superhero and help us. The connection to Ross Marquand is through The Walking Dead because Robert Kirkman created The Walking Dead, he was on The Walking Dead TV show, but also in real life you probably remember Ross Marquand took over as the voice of Red Skull in a couple other characters in the MCU. He's also the voice of Ultron, Ultron's supposed to be coming back during the Armor Wars movie. That's Walton Goggins as Cecil talking about letting Invincible going on missions again for the Global Defense Agency but putting him on a short leash since it's still early days after the events of season 1 when he's talking about it. He fights the Mahler twins again, they're supposed to be working with Angstrom Levy helping him construct his multiversal device. This is Kari Payton as Black Samson yelling about taking Invincible down. Then we get a montage of characters returning from season 1 like pretty much everybody who survived season 1 is coming back. In probably the last scene, and it's a really big one too, really big reveal, is Peter Cohen, Optimus Prime himself, is the voice of Thaddeus. So the idea is that Thaddeus is a huge character in the history of the Invincible universe. He's like an OG Viltrumite that goes back to the original war that cleansed their people of all their weaknesses. And when he's talking about, like, I haven't seen this kind of destruction since the last great war. Remember, Viltrumites just get stronger as they get older, so theoretically they could live forever, which is why he's so old. But what wound up happening is that when their race started their internal civil war to make themselves stronger, they started conquering the rest of the universe, eventually he saw that as a great evil, he saw their people as evil and rebelled against them. In the aftermath of their people's supremacy, he became the first rebel against their people, the first Viltrumite to go against the united Viltrumite people. During episode 8, Alan the Alien explains to Invincible what the coalition of planets is, basically an anti-Viltramite coalition of planets that want to get rid of them and stop them from conquering the universe. Thaddeus was actually a founding member of the coalition of planets. They briefly tease the Scourge virus during the events of season 1 when Omniman is talking about the history of their race. The Scourge was a virus that killed off most of their race, some of them survived like a very very small number, which is why they changed their conquering tactics. During the events of season 1, Omniman explained that they would basically send one to a planet where he would create a child, that child would be half Viltrumite, and then he would use that child to take over the planet. That was his original intention for Mark, the invincible character, that they would conquer the planet for Viltrum. Before the Scourge virus, when there were a ton of Viltrumites, they would send in traditional forces, like a whole bunch of Viltrumites would go into a planet and then try and conquer it the old fashioned way. The new way was just because their numbers were so scarce, like they needed them to go out and create a whole bunch more half Viltrumites. But the whole idea is that Thaddeus actually created the Scourge virus, so who better to try and get rid of the Viltrumites than a Viltrumite himself? They tease Omniman coming back during season 2, I love the way they end the trailer too, you should have died at birth, that's such an Omniman thing to say to your child. Meaning that Invincible will reunite with him on another planet. One of the big things in the aftermath of season 1 is that Omniman refused to kill his son Invincible and left the planet but because Thrag ordered him to take over a planet he had to go find another planet to take over so he just went and did the exact same thing, have another child on a different planet. So basically Mark winds up getting another half brother from a different race of aliens. And even though the series in general follows Mark Grayson Invincible, Omniman continues to be a very important character throughout the entire run of the comics. And because Thaddeus was around during the original Viltrumite War, he so long lived, he remembers everything about their race, he becomes a big source of information for both Omniman and for Mark. There are a lot of secrets about the history of their people, a lot of intrigue, a lot of Game of thrones -y type of stuff that they get into. I don't want to get into too many spoilers during this video, but all the comics are out there right now, like the entire run of the comics started and finished a long time ago, so you can actually go read that right now. They did say the events of the series in general, like season 2 and beyond, will be a little bit different from the comics but pretty close to the comic book story. They also just teased that Omniman as well as Homelander from The Boys and Peacemaker are showing up in Mortal Kombat 1 as playable characters.
Not really sure what Peacemaker is going to do in a situation like that. Like you have a couple of gods and then just like a normal character with a bunch of guns. If you spotted any other Easter eggs or references in the trailer that I didn't talk about, or you have any big questions about things in the trailer that I didn't address, just write them below in the comments. Tomorrow, there'll probably be some more trailers, maybe a Loki season two trailer, probably a couple other really big announcements. So I'll try to do videos for everything. Be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. And click here for all my Comic-Con trailer videos. Click here for that Secret Invasion episode six finale video too. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.